couple weeks ago, I did a video on Visual Copilot. That is a Figma plugin from Builder.io that, amongst other things, can convert a Figma mockup to React plus Tailwind. And a lot of the feedback that I got was, hey, that's cool, but I use this thing instead. And there was a lot of interest. So I was like, you know what? I should probably do another video where I compare the different tools that y'all are using in kind of a sciencey sort of way on a single mockup, and we'll see which one is the best. Now I've ranked these 13 different tools from worst to best, and you'll get to see the code all the way along the line and decide for yourself which one you think is the right one for you. Now, before we get into it, there is a sponsor this week, and that's brilliant. Much thanks to them for that. Let's get right into it. Now, this is my particular ranking from not the best to the best at the end. And the one that is at the start of that is Copycat. Now, if I go here to get started for free and I click on the install the Copycat, I get a 404, so it doesn't work. So that's kind of why it's at the bottom of the pack. If you work on Copycat and you're like, hey, it actually does work and you're just not doing it right, let me know. And if it works and it's great, I'll do another video on it. Okay, so let's try out number two then. So back in Figma, we are going to be in developer mode, which we are. We'll go to plugins, and then we'll take a look at Figma to React from Quest. Now, this one has an unlock full functionality button. In order to get that to go, I had to actually start a trial of the software, and I'm not doing that. Uh, honestly, if a trial is required to get to the generation system, I'm not going to do it. And I think if you're on that team, then I would strongly recommend you having a way to get code out of it before actually putting a credit card on the line for a trial, because come on, you know, just like everybody else, I'm going to forget about the fact that I subscribed to you and all that stuff. So, okay. The next one up is Figma to HTML. This one wants to be in design mode. So you got to follow this little thing over here. We'll go over here and go Figma to HTML in the plugins. And there we go. Some want to be in design mode. Some want to be in developer mode. I'm not sure why. The difference, we'll hit run. And to be honest, I'm just gonna go over to what it did before. So this is this PX code site, we've got our projects, it's got the untitled project that I created from before. I'll click on the page. This actually looks really promising, but when I wanna go to component and say that this is the login page, then it actually, yeah, okay, login or something, we'll just do that. It has this weird thing where it wants me to select a header for it, I'll show you in a second. We get this interesting warning about unstructured versus structured. I don't really understand, but I'm gonna hit okay and say I do. And then there's something about setting a header. Well, I don't have a header. This is just one dialogue and I couldn't figure out a way to actually push through this. So I don't know what the code looks like, unfortunately. All right, the next four up actually did give us some code. So let's go take a look. All right, so back over in developer mode. I'm gonna choose auto HTML. Now this is kind of a family of four different plugins that all essentially do the same thing. And that's, I believe what they're doing is they're going through the entire stack of the elements. If we look over here in Figma, you can see this is like a big old stack of you know frames and images. And it's basically just going and taking all of those frames and that whole tree and just converting it into HTML one for one, which is not what some of the other plugins do. And the result is, well, you'll see. So let's go right to auto HTML and we confirm. And so now you can see how quick this is. If I confirm like that, it just almost bang, done, just like that. And what so what's really happening here is that, yeah, again, it's going through that entire tree and converting it into div. So you get this kind of div soup in here. And really sadly, and it's like some cases you get this SVG. So it's taking this uh, username over here and it's actually converting it into an SVG, which obviously it's an input field. I don't know if this is particularly helpful for folks. And there's basically four plugins that do pretty much this kind of conversion. And that would be Figma to code, this one auto HTML, Tailwind React code generator, and Figma to Tailwind CSS. They all basically do pretty much exactly the same thing. All right, now let's get to one that actually does do what I think is the start of some really good code for us. And that one is Locofy. Now I've tried Locofy a couple of times before. Let's go give it a try this time. 
And that's actually pretty good, right? Look at this. They got to expand here. Nice fidelity between these two things. And this is essentially showing us what that code is going to give us. So let's take a look at this code. And the code is okay. It's got some absolute positioning in it. I'm not a super fan of that. But what we do find again is that instead of giving us, in this case, an SVG, it's now just giving us a div for the username as opposed to an SVG. It's still not functional, right? I, st I still want, I want an input in there and I'm not getting that. So, yeah, you know, a decent start and certainly tailwind, but, you know, beyond that, I don't think it's particularly useful or great. But uh, one thing in this, uh, you can apparently tag stuff and then it becomes a button or an input field. Now, if I click on text field here, I'm not seeing, like, I can't actually, like, select a text fit input field. So... Uh, there it is. I, I would want to actually select input here, but I don't want to do tagging. I don't want to actually have to go through and tag that this is a button. I want you to detect that for me and other tools detect that for me. So I'm not sure why this one can't. So yeah, if you could figure out the whole tagging thing, I'd be much more excited about Locofy. All right. So the next one up is DieWise. You have to be in designer mode again. So let's go over here to DieWise. If this isn't the right pronunciation, please let me know. Hit DieWise, Figment of Code. And uh, yeah, okay, so design a code, cool. So I was never able to get selected frames to work. I, you know, I figured that would be a good thing to do. So all frames is the only thing I ever got to work. And then the weird thing about this is you actually have to give it like the URL of the Figma file, but I'm already on the URL of the Figma file. So I'm not sure why I have to do that, but okay. I'm just gonna kind of do the, shake and bake thing and show you what the output of this is. It actually does take a reasonable amount of time to actually do a conversion. In fact, I did another page that had several pages in it and it took, I think, 24 hours? I, I, I wanna say, it, all I know is that I got an email the next morning that it was done, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, and let's see, so five hours ago, that'd be that one. And yep, it's just got my login. And so yeah, pretty good. All right, so down in the code, we got a page. Now, I think this is a no-code platform, really, and this is just an export to their no-code platform. The idea is that they're going to go and take all your pages, so that's kind of a restriction right there. The kind of tools that I want to use, I want to be able to go, you know, do a dialogue or be able to do a whole page or just do a button or something like that. You know, I kind of want to be able to kind of select the granularity of the thing that I want. That's not happening in this case, but it does seem to have picked up the fact that the column for this date selector, I guess, is is something that needs to be called out as a, a particular component. So I go down here and I take a look at that. Now this is a text field and it's still got it as a text field, but not as a, I think, editable text field. Oh, it's hard to know because the components directory, I don't have any access to that beyond the two custom components that are created, desktop one and desktop one email. I, I don't know. So good, a seemingly good start, but not particularly functional. All right, now this one may be using AI. I don't know, but our top four certainly do use AI. And if you're interested in learning more about AI, there's no better place to learn that than on this week's sponsor, and that's Brilliant. The best thing you can give yourself this holiday season is the gift of knowledge. And I'm doing that for myself. I'm Brilliant by relearning neural networks, which are the basis of AI. Brilliant is my favorite place to learn all things math and science. And it's not just because of all of the topics that are there. It's because of how they teach it. They teach it interactively. You get to play with things. And that's the way that I learn. And I think everybody learns that way. They make the knowledge interactive and that makes it sticky. Brilliant also encourages you by keeping track of your progress. I love it when I'm on a long streak on Brilliant. I know at that point that I'm really learning. So let's go for a 30-day streak together this holiday season on Brilliant. So if you want to work on your computer science fundamentals or broaden your skills into the data sciences or reinforce your math skills, there's just no better place to do that than on Brilliant. Now, I know a lot of you might be looking for jobs in the new year. That's probably going to mean interviewing. And if you're doing computer science interviewing, you're going to want to know those data structures and algorithms. And Brilliant is a fantastic place to learn all that. So get prepped for those interviews on Brilliant.
So this holiday season, come and join me over on Brilliant. You'll get your first 30 days for free. That's basically the whole holiday season right there. Go to brilliant.org slash Jack Harrington. The first 200 of you will get 20% off of your annual subscription from my friends over at Brilliant. Thank you so much to Brilliant for your continued support of this channel. It is so appreciated. Now, rocking in at number four is Anima. So again, we're over in developer mode. We select Anima. We select the layers that we want to convert. We've got a nice little preview up here. So yeah, pretty decent output, I would say. There is some absolute positioning in there, which I'm not super fond of. And if we go back into our text fields, as an example, there is no input that I'm aware of. Yeah, okay. So it's deterministic. I just did this before and we're getting the same output. So that, that's cool. Uh, the UI is also a little bit janky. It's hard to know how to navigate it. So it's, it's good. It's a good starting point. Uh, it would be great if the inputs were actually marked as inputs and the buttons were marked as buttons. Well, I guess the button is a button button. Let's go take a look. Yep, okay. All right, then. Uh, don't get to see what a button looks like. But I imagine the button's a button, but the input is not an input, so that's not fantastic. So let's go take a look at number three, and that's Visual Copilot from Builder. All right. So let's just take a look at the fidelity. It looks pretty good. It actually picked up, there's a, what's happening in the Figma is that they're like blurring a background tube image. It's fine. It looks good. And uh, I would say everything looks good here except for the mobile view is a little bit indented. That's not particularly good, but otherwise I think it looks great. Let's go take a look at the code. So no absolutes. That's fantastic. But no inputs either. But if we go over into quality mode, which is a pay for feature, then we do get the inputs. So there you go. So, but it's not a, a trial like we had early on. Like, so that's good. You at least get some code right up front. And I think it's very high quality code. So if you wanted to, you could just drop in those inputs yourself. Otherwise I think the fidelity on this is fantastic. All right, so let's go over to number two. So number two is V0 from Vericell. If you haven't heard of this, you're probably living under a rock. So welcome to the world. The idea here is that you just give it a text prompt. You hit return, and then it just generates for you using Shad CN a user interface. But it also has a feature where you can generate code from an image. So all you need to do is just take your image, drop it onto the field, hit return, and then you'll get your mock-up. So let's go take a look at what it created for us. All right, so this is pretty good. I mean, it's not perfect. So what's actually happening here is that if we take a look at the code, we can see it. It's actually using Shad CN, so it's going to bring in Shad CN, which is a Tailwind UI toolkit. Uh, but it's got a particular style, so it's bringing in button as an example here, and it's using the Shad CN button. So if your UI looks like Shad CN, this is going to be a fantastic tool for you. Uh, it also has the inputs. There's no absolutes. So yeah, really good. Now, if you don't have something that looks like Shad CN, if you have something that looks more bespoke, like this e-commerce example that I ran through it, what you get is you get a Shad CNification of that example. For example, you take this card, which had white text over this image, and it in turn turns it into a Shad CN card. So if, if Shad CN's your deal, I think V0 is fantastic. Otherwise, you're going to want to take a look at number one, which is Screenshot to Code. So Screenshot to Code is an open source project. You can go to screenshottocode.com, give them your open AI key, and you can do it all on the .com site. I wasn't super keen on the idea of giving someone my open AI key. So instead, I just get cloned this locally and then ran through the getting started, which is super easy. And let's go take a look at what it looks like. All right, so here we go. Let's go again and drag and drop our login. Get this cool like photocopier type UI over here. I think that's kind of neat. And then it gives us a preview. Eh, I think it did a reasonably good job here. Got the inputs, that's great at least. The flag is not inside of that. There's no spacing here. Didn't get the button all that well, but let's see, mobile. Oh, that looks actually pretty good. Okay, that's fine. And let's go take a look at the code. And it doesn't look like there's any absolutes in here. That's great. And there are inputs, so that's great too. So I say 
a really good starting point for your application. And wow, so easy. All you really need is an open AI key and you've got something going on. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this quick look at 13 different Figma to code solutions. I gotta say in the previous video, I did get a lot of comments about how this is replacing us as UI engineers. I don't think so. For me, this is just accelerating my process. It's just taking away this one particular aspect of taking a Figma mock and turning it into a base set of code that I then have to go and add all the interaction to, go and connect to microservices, add, in this case, form validation, and all of that, internationalization, accessibility, all the rest. Come on, maybe 20% of what I do is going to be handled by this. But maybe you don't think so. If not, you let me know in the comments right down below. If this is, if I missed a tool and you want to tell me about it, also leave that in the comments down below. Love to hear from y'all. In the meantime, of course, if you like the video, hit that like button. And if you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell. You'll be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.